Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're doing a refresher of an old episode from two years ago. This Tech Tips suggested software episode is going to be taking a fresh wheels look at Ninite.com. It's like an HD remake of the old video or something. Wheels, the old video wasn't HD! So that's kind of like a that's kind of like a cheap excuse for a remake. Anyway, we use Ninite all the time as we set up new computers for benchmarking, editing, and testing, and it really is pretty much the easiest way to get your new computer up and running with all the programs that you need in order for it to have basic functionality. Because for some reason, you know, Macs can figure out how to everything that they need on them, and PCs can't because Macs just run perfectly right out of the box. Wait, oh no. Okay, well, Ninite's great. This time around, we're going to give you a brief rundown not only on what Ninite does, but what programs we choose to install and why. Now, the first thing that you should know about Ninite is that it is free for personal use. There's absolutely no cost. The way they support themselves is actually by selling Ninite Pro for businesses who want to use Ninite to manage applications on their networks. So for you and for me, it's a great way to get commonly used apps installed quickly. I guess I should explain how this works though. Ninite takes some of the most commonly used software based on user suggestions and creates an installer framework. The software is great for new builds because instead of visiting all those very various software websites, download the installers, selecting installation options, unchecking all of that horrible stuff like the toolbars that you don't even want, and then waiting for it all to install, Ninite is essentially a script that does it all for you and automatically opts out of all that crap that you don't want. It selects smart defaults that you'd want, including installation into the default directory, 64-bit um, installation on 64-bit machines, latest stable versions, and it skips any up-to-date apps and skips any reboot requests, so you just have to do one reboot right at the end. There's also a few convenience features. All apps are defaulted to your system language where available, and it auto-copies proxy settings from Internet Explorer. So to use Ninite, you simply go to their website, check all the boxes of the software that you want, and download it, then run it, it goes to work. The great thing about it is that it's multi-threaded and will concurrently download and install each application. So if you've got super fast internet, it will simply download everything and queue up the installers to run one after the other. So here's a screenshot of the apps that the Tech Tips team here uses on their fresh workbenches. Number one, Chrome. As seen in a previous Tech Tips suggested software episode, the team here uses Google's Chrome browser because they like it. And you guys can check out the link in the description to see a video detailing what browser plugins and extensions are recommended by the Tech Tips team. Next up is Notepad++. Essentially, this is the notepad that you know and love, except with a few notable <coughs> Exceptions, or additions, rather. It's designed to be more like a casual source code editor, so code such as HTML, C Sharp, and other common languages are supported, including collapsing functions and members, and generally it's a nice tool to have around for a power user. Oh, and it supports tabbed windows as well. Don't worry, you don't have to be a programmer to use it. It's pretty awesome compared to Notepad, which is pretty um, bare bones. Under media, the Tech Tips team uses VLC because it plays everything under the sun, even slightly corrupted files. It can often manage to play, and in some cases, they use it to transcode files into different video formats. The cool thing about VLC is that you don't actually have to download separate codec packs. It deals with all of that on its own. Now, QuickTime is used simply to provide a good Apple-compatible codec, code Tech code deck. I'm just joking on all the words. And this is relied upon by Adobe's Premiere and After Effects to interpret .mov footage. For runtimes, just check all the boxes. When you're going to spend enough time on the internet, you're definitely going to run into all of this stuff at some point. Java, .NET, Silverlight, Air, and Shock. Okay, well, Shockwave probably not that often, but still. Instead of worrying about installers later, these are fairly innocuous. They're not going to slow down your computer, so you might as well have them. If you don't have Photoshop, we recommend GIMP. Uh, which is an open source version photo manipulation tool. It borrows many concepts from Adobe's Photoshop. I mean, pretty much, you know, a lot of the stuff you can do in Photoshop, GIMP can do as well, but it's free! 
Now, before the team was on Creative Cloud, they also would install Adobe Acrobat Reader and PDF Creator. So Acrobat format really is the, uh, or PDF format really is the de facto standard when it comes to digital read-only documents. So at some point, you'll probably run into the need to either view or create a PDF. And that is one of the first things that, you know, people who build systems for family or whoever else will often get a call about if they don't remember to do it. Mm, I can't open Adobe's. And you're just like, yeah, it's called a PDF, but sure, whatever. Just put Reader on your system or like Fox or something. Anyway, security. Now, we're probably going to get some interesting feedback about this, but the Tech Tips team doesn't really use any security software. They're behind a hardware firewall, so they don't really worry about a lot of kinds of attacks and are super careful about downloading files and opening attachments to the point where they've never really had a problem with viruses, adware, and spyware. However, if they had Brandon, one of my employees working for them, then they would probably want to have at least Microsoft Security Essentials. As a compression tool, all these guys use 7-zip. Apparently, I'm the only person left on Earth who still uses WinRAR, but whatever. Thank you, Jack. Pound it. WinRAR Army. All right, anyway, it's open source and it can uncompress and compress pretty much anything. It integrates nicely into the Windows shelf for all the functions you commonly need and all that stuff that 7-Zip users seem to think is important. Google Drive helps keep all of us, you know, with all of our shared files synced across all the folders and whatnot in the cloud. Now, while the Tech Tips team does use BitTorrent Sync for larger files or for folders that need to be in multiple locations, such as homes and different office locations, both of them work great with Google Drive providing the easy view anywhere functionality and document management, while BitTorrent Sync is a great way to get large files like video footage all over the place because there are no capacity limits other than the hard drives of the machines you're using. In the other category, Steam, because like, it's basically essential, it should just come in as part of Windows. That would be awesome. Steam integrated into Windows because it's so much better than the Windows 8 app marketplace. Just everything was on Steam. We need like a picture of Gabe N here in his glory. Anyway, under utilities, Team Viewer. We use it all the time because it really is a super convenient way to get remote access to other systems. It's used heavily to access home computers from the office and vice versa, depending on the situation. There have been multiple times where it was necessary to remote in, utilize a locally stored file, or fix a, you know, a video edit last minute so it could be re-output without actually downloading all the footage, and it's absolutely fantastic. And then finally, Winderstat. It really is the easiest way to figure out where all that darn storage went. There are smaller SSDs in most of the machines at the office just for performance and they have a tendency to fill up and you kind of like, where's all this space being taken? I mean, Adobe software is particularly bad this way. It creates preview and auto save files all over the place. It can be hard to keep track of. And this tool visually lays out the file structure of your hard drive and allows you to make room by clearing large files or groups of files that you no longer need. There's actually a space sniffer is another alternative to that one that I use personally as well. Thank you for watching, guys. Is there something we missed? That is a must have on Nine Nights Lift. Comment below and let us know. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more Tech Tips suggested software just like this one. T2S2, you guys. Tech Tips suggested software. That's how you say it T2S2. Or squared, that's fine too.